It's a film that came from absolutely nowhere, yet unlike most successful science fiction movies that come from the US or the UK, this one came from France. Released in 1997, the film was a massive success just because it was so different. Yes, we're talking about The Fifth Element, and this is Science 5. The Fifth Element was initially conceived and written by Luc Besson when he was a teenager, although it would take another 20 years before it appeared on the screen. The story is set in the future as Earth prepares for an upcoming attack by an unknown and unexplained dark force simply called Evil. To combat this attack, a special weapon has been prepared by an allied alien race called the Monshiwan. However, when the delivery of this new weapon doesn't go as planned, life becomes difficult for everyone, none more so than a New York City taxi driver who unexpectedly becomes involved in all the mayhem. Although the film is essentially a thrill-seeking roller coaster experience, which can be interpreted in a literal sense as all the cars fly in three-dimensional space, it does have some interesting social messages embedded within it. In the first instance, one of the focal points of the film is how large corporations treat their vast numbers of staff, where people are reduced to basic numbers and statistics. In a time when cities have become megalopuses due to massive population increase, individuals have effectively become swallowed up by the greater mass of the whole. In addition, with the Earth itself being so heavily damaged by environmental neglect as self-inflicted global pollution has continued unabated over the centuries, the rich and powerful are fortunate to enjoy far more pleasant surrounds found on other worlds, in this case the luxury cruise line of Floston Paradise, which would be a welcome relief for anyone who could afford such a trip. One of the things that makes the film stand out from other science fiction movies is its production design. From the look of the Earth itself, to the Jean-Paul Gaultier designed costumes, even down to the look of the spaceships and the vehicles, everything about the film is different, which can be directly attributed to its distinct European influence. With that in mind, one of the more impressive aspects of the film is the design of the aliens, especially the Monshiwen and Plava Laguna. The Monshiwen in particular are completely unique for science fiction media due to their awkward size and lumbering mobility. Yet despite their fearsome bulk, outwardly they project a visage of benevolence. In much the same way, the diva Plava Laguna exudes a high degree of extraterrestrial exoticness, which is only matched by her outstanding singing voice. Another interesting aspect of the film is how the police are portrayed. Although New York City is not governed as a police state, nevertheless a police presence is a constant factor in the film. Furthermore, the police themselves are portrayed to be far more aggressive and ominous as highlighted by their bulky and impractical uniforms, which are clearly intended to intimidate people so as to keep them in line. Featured in the film are the two main protagonists, Corbin Dallas played by Bruce Willis and Lilu portrayed by Mila Jovovich. Whilst for the antagonist there is Jean-Baptiste Emmanuel Zorg, played with great effectiveness by Gary Oldman. One of the more interesting facets about the movie is it never fully explains what the evil actually is, where it comes from or why its goal is to destroy all life, especially on Earth. Unlike most films where the actions of the antagonist are usually outlined in detail, in this case this information is completely absent which then allows the audience to ponder the same question as the in-universe characters. Why is it doing this, whilst never actually revealing the answer? Yet in amongst all the references to corporate greed, Earth's dire future and ongoing consumerism, the fifth element is essentially an action film, and in this regard it doesn't disappoint. Somewhat ironically, even though the film is clearly not a Hollywood production, it still features the classic Hollywood cliché of the reluctant hero. In this case, Corbin Dallas, who is forced into a mission of mercy, which he is desperately trying to avoid. But it all works! Between the well-produced and engaging action scenes, the key dramatic moments, and the core message about how humanity has a knack for destroying itself, it's all just great fun. Under the outstanding direction of Luc Besson and the great soundtrack by Eric Serra, The Fifth Element was a massive success upon release. Particularly as three of the film's most popular lines, including Big Bada Boom, Multipass, and Aziz Light, have become much repeated quotes from the movie's devoted fanbase. So who should see the film? Being a product of the mid-1990s, the movie features a number of comedic, adult and violent scenes, so it definitely requires some parental guidance for young viewers. But then again, as an action film, this is something you would naturally expect to see. So if you haven't seen the film before, then you're in for a treat. The Fifth Element is a fantastic movie for anyone who loves science fiction or great cinematic entertainment. However, be aware it is first and foremost an action movie, so it's not meant to be analysed on a deep morality or philosophical level. At the very least, you can just class it as a great high quality guilty pleasure, and for that reason alone, it's well worth watching.